Right, the US presidential election will be the most controversial presidential election in living history and living memory. It certainly becomes the most fateful for the United States, but also potentially for the MENA region. So if we look at it, obviously the United States as a superpower, arguably in a state of decline, but nonetheless, they still play a very important arbiter and mediator role in many of the conflicts also in the Middle East. So in that sense, whatever happens on Tuesday, more importantly, what happens afterwards, will be something that will have massive implications for the entire MENA region. So what we're installed for could be potentially one of the most post, greatest post-electoral crises in the United States. A lot of chaos that will come and not only affect the, uh, the United States, but potentially the Middle East. And that that's comes at a time when the United States are amid an economic crisis, where the United States are amid a COVID-19 crisis that is unmanaged and have experienced unprecedented levels of polarizations uh, and polarization on both sides of the political aisle. So among Democrats as well as Republicans. So this transition of power will be very, very crucial to watch. And we have a candidate here with Donald Trump who is certainly not playing by the rule book in any sense of the word. On the record, Trump has said repeatedly that, you know, he will leave it open, whether he will concede or not, whether he will accept the electoral outcome or not. Um, and it's something that Biden and most Democrats have just brushed away as just another form of Trump rhetoric. But when we look beyond this, um, the scenario of Trump not conceding is fairly real. And thinking about his electoral defeat, Trump's electoral defeat, and the nature of the US uh, electoral system, we could be in for a constitu constitutional crisis in the United States that could prolong way beyond a week or a month. So we're not necessarily talking about an election day, but potentially election month, if not multiple months, considering how long the legal battle might continue. So if the margin between both candidates is close, and if you look at the polls, it might be potentially quite close. Um, the results then that we might see on the 3rd of November might be entirely meaningless um, because we have, again, unprecedented levels of mail-in ballots coming in. So we actually might not have anything of an authoritative result on 3rd of November. And the only result that we might see that might be authoritative might be over the next coming weeks and and then we will have to see what Trump does. So with the deluge of mail-in ballots coming in, we, that will only be counted after the 3rd of November, we might have an election result only very much at the end um, of next week at best. So what we might end up with on election night is something that Democrats call a red mirage. So namely the illusion of critical swing states and critical battleground states turning red rather than blue. The reason being that most supporters of Trump, most Republicans will probably go vote in person, while most of Democrats might go and vote via mail-in ballots. So what we might end up with on election night is a scenario where by majority um, we only see the electoral votes of the day being counted rather than across the board um, the votes of mail-in ballots. Um, hence we have an entirely distorted result that disproportionately favours Republicans. And then the question is what are we going to do with this result? So even if the media says this is just a preliminary result and final results have to be waited for, we might end up with a scenario where Trump might call himself victorious on election night, which will then set most of his Trump supporters, uh, roughly 30% of the US electorate, into celebration mode, saying we won this presidential election. Now, and the problem is, if then a couple of days later, we, we might see the mail-in ballots coming in, this entire result might shift in favor of Biden. And the question then is, not only will Trump concede, but will Trump supporters concede who have been exposed to years of false information, narratives that are weaponized and narratives that undermine the uh, trustworthiness of the US electoral system. So 
So in a world where narratives and perceptions weigh a lot heavier than facts, Trump, all he has to do is casting doubt over the electoral process. All he has to do is question the authoritativeness of the results and thereby mobilizing not just legions of lawyers who will go into litigation mode trying to, in battleground states, trying to tackle and uh, challenge the results. But what we also will have is we have an increasing number of people on the streets being mobilized. So myth, the entire myth of voter fraud is something that you know, we've seen over the years being spread. And it's a myth. There is no such thing as water, voter fraud that is statistically significant. Victimizing himself, Trump can victimize the entire campaign. He can victimize his supporters and saying, look, you guys have been robbed of your voice. And that will not go down well in a highly, highly polarized information environment. And let's not forget the 2000 episode of Bush versus Gore, whereby Al Gore challenged the results um, of the counting in Florida, which went all the way up to the Supreme Court. Let's not forget, El Gore had a lot more ammunition legally to actually go forward with that litigation and potentially go beyond um, the interregnum period. But he chose not to. He chose to concede at some point because he didn't want to throw America into unbalance. Now, the question is, will Donald Trump do this? And we're in an different, entirely different environment where narratives count a lot more, where people are a lot more polarized. And the question is, if Trump's someone who will just go on election night, say, oh, well, you know, the better candidate won and I'm out. Most likely not. So the closer the margin of that electoral vote, the more Trump will probably go into full attack mode legally, but also in the social in the social media realm. And he might go beyond the date in December that is set in the Electoral College to vote um, for the new president. He might go beyond even the inauguration day, which is set for the 20th of January 2021. So what we might see for the next coming month is a legal battle and a media battle um, that is taking place and that will consume all of US institutions. It will consume um, the political elites and it will consume the country, which would most likely put America into some sort of autopilot mode. And especially if on the 20th, of January, new, no new president has been agreed upon, we might end up with a scenario where a, the leader of the House might take over as a caretaker government. Obviously, a caretaker government in that respect will not be proactive, it will be reactive, it will not respond to any crises. So America might go paralyzed for three, four, five months until this battle has been decided one way or the other. In that scenario, Obviously, most of the crisis, if you just look at the Middle East, might become uh, undecided because the bad guys might not be uh, checked or feel that they might not be checked. And the key aspect here is, you know, remember the idiom of when the cat's away, the mice are out to play. The same might happen here. We've got the Iranians who might be looking to make gains in Iraq or activate Hezbollah to take some action against Israel. We might have the Emiratis and Haftar trying to seize opportunities in Libya uh, in order to kind of tilt the balance of power locally. We might have an opportunity for Turkey to kind of test its S-400 system as the Americans are not watching. So in this, in this already highly polarized, apolar and entirely complex MENA environment with the hegemon away and with America not there to actually put people on the spot, a lot might think now is the time to settle scores. And that is highly, highly dangerous for the Middle East.